we need a skinny roll of tape and we also need some clear Elmer's glue. And our template for today is gonna to be an outside window. We gotta put some of that tape on the window. Now, you can go ahead and take the tape and mask it to the grid that's already on the window, or you can just go random like I'm doing it. But the next step to this is where to grab that Elmer's glue. Once we get some paint in there, all you gotta do is just go back and forth with it, and it shakes up really nice. Next, move on to your second color. These are our four colors we're gonna go with. Now, because it's on the Elmer's glue, it's actually non-toxic, and I I used a foam brush to transfer it to the window. It's gonna take multiple coats, but the glue and the paint dries really fast. You can actually put a coat on within an hour after you put it on. Once it dries overnight, you're gonna take a knife and very gently, we don't wanna scratch the window. If you try to pull the tape with it out using the knife, it may pull the glue off. Just go ahead and start pulling the tape off. It's another thing. When you're done with this and you wanna change it or just take it off later, it peels right off. That's our final project. In the afternoon, when the sun hits the window, it just glows inside the room and gives it multiple colors. We are gonna make some beautiful home decor items using clear Elmer's glue. Up first, we are going to fill this vase with the clear glue. Then we're gonna add in some clear and white decorative pebbles. Now I'm gonna grab some faux flowers. Now I'm just going to stick these into that glue. Once you've got them arranged just right, set this aside and let it dry. Now you have a permanent floral arrangement that looks like it has these water and stones in the bottom of it. This is gonna look great in your home. Next up, we are gonna grab a couple glass mason jars. So you're gonna grab a small dish and you're gonna fill it with clear glue and a little bit of water. I used about two tablespoons of glue and about one tablespoon of water. Then I'm gonna drop in a little bit of food coloring. Then stir it up until it's mixed really well. Grab your mason jar, make sure it's nice and clean. Pour that dark blue mixture into the jar and swirl it around so it covers everything. Once you've swirled it all around, you can dump the excess back into the original container. Now we wanna let this drip for a little bit. Let it drip for about 10 minutes. Take a paper towel, wipe off any excess drips that are around the rim of the jar. Then place this upside down on a piece of parchment paper. Pop it in your oven at 175 for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, take it out, turn it right side up, and let it cool completely. These jars make great decor around your home. Just remember, you, they're not bases. You can't fill them with water, but you can definitely display some dried flowers in them. I'm gonna take the piece of glass out, and I'm gonna draw a grid of squares and rectangles with black puffy paint. When that's done, I wanna let that dry completely. So I'm gonna use a little bit of clear glue and a few drops of paint. So on that piece of glass where we added the puffy paint, when it's completely dry. I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick and transfer some of those beautiful blue colors onto the glass. But a little goes a long way because you don't want this to run over the black line. Once everything is done, you can grab a toothpick and go back and just pop any of those bubbles that are in there. Then set this aside and just let it be. Once it's dry, pop that glass back in the frame, set it up by a window, and you have a beautiful piece of faux stained glass for your home. The carpet in my office needed to be replaced, but it just wasn't in the budget. But corn and crumpled paper was. Mixing equal parts of glue and water, I made the paste for the floor. Using a wide paintbrush, I applied the glue to the floor, making sure I got underneath the baseboards. Then I laid down the paper and brushed the glue on top. I continued to apply the glue to the floor, then the torn paper, and then more glue over top of the torn paper. I switched out my brush for a foam roller to cover larger areas, but I kept the brush to use underneath the baseboard. After the glue dried, I applied stain to the floor using a foam roller. After the stain dried, I applied coat after coat of polyurethane. Using a lamb's wool applicator made this process so easy. I really love this floor, can you tell? I hope this inspires you to tackle this very easy project. Quick trip to my local Dollarama. Separate the layers. Cut the napkin so that you have enough to cover the body of the jar. Now I'm using some clear glue mixed with a tiny amount of water painted onto the side of the glass jar. Then lay down the paper nap and then using a piece of scrunched up plastic wrap Use that to pat down the napkin and eliminate any wrinkles that way. Draw around the lid because that will be the right size and cut out the piece of napkin, stick it to the bottom of the jar in the same way. Using the same process, cut out a circle for the top and a little strip for the edge and stick it in place. When it was dry, I decided to give it two coats of a gloss varnish. I have taken a battery operated puck light and stuck it into the lid of the glass jar. And here are my finished chinoiserie jars. Don't they look great? 
I made a trip to my local dollar store. Taking a terracotta pot, I draw a very random shape. Taking the clear glue, I pour some onto the side of the pot, picking up some of the blue gravel and press it down. I then put some of the silver glitter glue around the edge. And here is my geode terracotta pot. So I put two spoons of cornstarch and two spoons of Elmer's glue. And that's what we're looking for. I'm going to use this really lovely mandala stencil. Going very carefully, I'm now going to apply it. The whole stencil is covered and now for the moment of truth. Very, very, very carefully lift this off. This is the next day now. I left it overnight to dry. Also sanded it very lightly. Okay, just going to give it one coat. I'm going to leave that to dry now. Just look how subtle this little design is on this tabletop. And all that with cornstarch and glue. It's really amazing. So we're going to start with this cellophane piece here. So I'm going to make the line here. I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Just put a clear dot, or you could run a clear line. And next, I'm going to go ahead and place the cellophane onto the glue and glass. So I'll go ahead and continue putting the glue and the cellophane up on all the windows. Here it is, all finished, and I could be more thrilled. I took the table apart, separating the glass from the metal ring. Laid the glass on top of the picture. I mixed two parts white glue to one part black craft paint. I outlined the sun. And once the lines had dried, I cleaned up any lines that were too thick by cutting them away using a utility knife. I painted the background using a one inch wide brush. I added designs to each panel. I gave the paint two coats of spray sealant. I used a medium grit sanding sponge. I painted the metal bright blue. The table looks great in our outside space and friends can't believe that I painted it. I'm going to stick these grasses and weeds to this glass. Cut off these extra bits on the bottom. Now I'm going to stick the tissue paper to the vase. I'm going to use a glue stick and then just rolling it, pulling it tight on this side, some more glue down and gently stick that in place too. I'm going to go around and just trim and just see how pretty these are. Really, really simple project to do. I want to show you how to do something fun with just some baking soda, glue, and water. The first thing we need is some baking soda. And this is going to make a really, really cool 3D paint that you can make artwork with. So I'm going to start with about a third of a cup of baking soda and dump that in. I'm going to need two teaspoons of water. And I'm also going to need a teaspoon of glue. And I like to use the clear glue for this because it's not gonna change um, my paint at all. So I'm gonna use the clear glue. I also want to add a little bit of paint to start. And I'm going to start with just some white paint to make sure that my mixture stays nice and bright. And then I'll show you I'm going to add some color in next. So I'm just going to add a, a teaspoon sorry, of some white paint as well. And I can see this is coming together beautifully. I want this to be nice and thick and chunky for the art project that I'm going to make with you today. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water to mine. It's just a little thick, probably because my paint was quite thick. But if you need to add more water, you wanna start with just a little bit and then add more as you go. Now, because I'm going to be making a spring project, I'm going to start with a, just a little bit of a burgundy color paint because I wanna make this um, like a pinky color. So I'm gonna put just a dab of this paint in next. And I'm gonna put this in now so that it can um, be mixed in with my paint. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this, but I like to add it at this point 
of the mixing process, but you can also do this after you've got your art piece made and then paint it. Okay, there we go. So my paint, my 3D paint here is ready to go and I'm gonna grab my canvas and show you what we're gonna do. To get started on our project, I am going to reuse an old canvas that I picked up at the thrift store for $2. I really like reusing old canvases instead of buying a new one so that we can reuse something that's already out there. So to prep my canvas for this art project, all I need to do is take some white paint and I'm just gonna cover this up. It'll likely take two coats to cover up the paint that's already on here. My canvas is all prepped and ready to go now so that the black canvas that I found for a couple dollars is all nice and white and it's ready to go. And I also have my paint ready to go. And what I want to do is create a beautiful big spring flower here. So to make your petals you can use any sort of little um, spatula or spoon, however you like to make them. And we want to take our paint and I'm going to kind of center my flower on this side. So I just want to center it a bit off. Off. and I'm gonna start using this paint to make really chunky petals so I'm just gonna spread it around like this and let me hold this up here I am going to be working towards the center here and I can kind of put that there to mark my center although it will be a different color later so I'm going to keep taking my paint here and I'm going to start with that outer ring of petals for my flower and I just want to goop this on however you'd like. I want to make my petals really nice and big and almost like they're coming off the edge of my canvas here working towards that center and I'm starting with the lightest color on the outside here and all I'm going to do is keep working around with these nice these are going to be the outer outer edge of the petals and you want to leave it nice and chunky on your canvas. Don't worry about smoothing it out. You'll have lots of time to work with this because it does take a bit of time to dry. So don't worry about um, doing all of your details right away. You'll have lots of time to play with this. I'm just going to turn my canvas here so I can work this direction. And I'm just going to smooth out the bottoms here so that I can add an another layer of petals. I'm going to make some more paint and then I'm going to add a closer layer of petals and as I work my way in I'm going to get darker and darker. I have gone ahead and mixed up another batch of paint and this time I made it just a shade darker than what I did originally. So now I'm going to start putting on another layer of petals and I want these petals to be in between the first ones. And I'm just going to keep pulling it further back towards the center of my flower. And I like doing this while the other layer of petals is still wet so that I can mold it and smooth it out if I need to. And you just wanna keep putting this layer in between the first ones. Now that I've added a little bit more of the colored paint to my mixture here, I'm ready to put on my final layer of petals before I do the center. So I'm just gonna make some small petals in between. And again, I have not waited for this to dry. I like to do this when it's still, um, the, the other layers are still wet. So I'm just gonna form some little petals coming into the center here. And you can make as many or as few petals as you want. You just want this to be a nice full flower. Once the inner circle is done like this, I'm going to let it start to dry before I do the center. I want that to start to crisp up and get hard because I don't want the pink to mix in with my center color. So I'm gonna leave that be for just a minute and then I'll show you how to finish off your center. To finish off the center of our flower, I've gone ahead and mixed some more of the 3D paint and this time I've added some brown paint to it. And I'm going to use a stubby stencil brush like this and I just want to kind of dab this all over the middle of my flower here. I really want it to kind of have little peaks and almost look like little seeds or um, um, like little uh, pods in there. So I'm just going to dab this 
And remember, you can always make your paint as thick or as thin as you'd like with this 3D paint. You just add more water if you want it thinner or more baking soda if you want it thicker. And there you go. You can add um, more of this brown as your paint dries. You, if you find you want another layer of this brown on top to give it even more texture, you can do that as your paint dries and it will sit nicely on top of this as well. This beautiful piece of art was so fun to make with homemade 3D paint. It was super easy to put together and it was so much fun to create, something that feels like it's just popping off the canvas. The next time you're looking for some new art for your home, I hope you will grab some baking soda and a little glue and make something yourself. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Home Talk. I'm Lisa from Recreated Designs. I'll see you next time.